Welcome back. And last time we were doing an unboxing of the Matos Designs Spiral Tree Kit. Today we're going to try to put one together and see see how it goes, what it looks like when it's uh, all assembled. And we'll even do some light tests at the end so you can kind of get a feel for what it looks like in the real world. Now this did not come with any directions or instructions, although it's pretty simply designed and pretty intuitive about how it all goes together. But I, this is certainly not the definitive way of putting it, uh, it all assembled. And I'm sure there's a lot of different ways that you could accomplish some of these parts. But this is the way I did it and it seems to overall be working and I'll even provide some feedback about maybe things I'd do differently as we go through this. All right, so this is what it looks like, uh, and we've got the lights on the left. We've got some foam pads that I have, and then we've got the main tree spiral that we're going to be putting some pixels in. Those pixels that we have off to the left, and a pair of pixel pliers. Figured that would come in handy. And this is all sitting on top of some uh, rubber mats that I'll be sitting on while assembling it. So all of this should be pretty protective of everything that we're doing. So here, uh, pretty simple, uh, obvious, just putting the pixels in. It was a bit tiff, tough to put them in, but the pixel pliers really kind of helped when it was tight or a little snug. But it didn't take too long to get this all put together. All 100 pixels for this part. All right, so this is what it looks like uh, from the top with all the pixels in it. Now you need uh, some hardware. This was not included. And what you see here is a 5 16th bolt with some washers and some nuts. And so this is gonna go on the top part and it's gonna hold it into the pole that is going to be, it's gonna be uh, stretched you know, up and down across. So this is just kind of like a pin that's gonna hold it into the top. So here you can see I'm taking this five inch long, 5 16th bolt, putting it through a very thick, this kind of almost a double thickness washer. Um, that's going to give it some port from the top. I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to flip this over because it's a little bit awkward and a little bit heavy with all the pixels in there and it uh, being very springy. But uh, flipping it over, putting it on the foam there. And so next I'm going to put another washer. So I'm basically sandwiching the tree, the green part between two washers. Pretty standard stuff that you would be doing. Um, and then I'm going to put a bolt on there to keep that part of the, uh, the assembly together and tight. Now, I ended up with a 516 bolt and uh, only because while I was at the hardware store finding the combination of a bolt, a uh, washer and a nut that all worked together that was somewhere in the range of what I was trying to accomplish, I was having a hard time without having to buy a pack of 50 or something. So, and I wanted the five inch long so that when it's inside the pole, there is a lot more for, you know, kind of distance for it to hold on and grip inside the pole if there's any kind of friction or leverage. And I'm adding a couple of bolts um, that I'm going to add. Uh, so I put two down at the very top just to kind of try and keep that nice and tight. And I'm going to put two more at the far end, and that's just to give it a little bit more um, meat to the uh, to the bolt on the inside so that it's just that much less wobble um, from the top side. I didn't know if it was going to be a problem. I figured it'd be very easy to just build this in and add a couple bolts there so um, just that much less wobble from the top portion of the tree. Probably not necessarily um, although it you know and if you are going to do this maybe if you had a bigger bolt or a bigger uh, in the bigger nut that you were putting inside there I uh, might might work better but that's what I was trying to accomplish here all right so next we have the bottom portion so this is the part that's going to attach directly to the pole and uh, you can see there's the bracket on the left and then there's a u-bolt this this bolt u-bolt and the um, nuts came with the kit and this is the five foot three quarter inch EMT that I bought it was built for four foot to be a four foot tree on three quarter inch conduit. I bought a five foot because it could buy them pre-cut and I didn't want a 10 foot, even though it would have been, you know, marginally more expensive to get the 10 foot really. But since I was only building one and I wanted to have that extra foot anyways, um, just so that uh, you, you'll see in a little bit of why I want that extra foot beyond and uh, why you might want it too, depending on how you're gonna put it into the ground or on a stand or something like that. 
So here you can start to see how this bracket is intended to attach to the pole. I have a little blue line on there that's marking where the four foot mark is on the conduit. Um, you can maybe barely see it, but that's what I'm kind of paying attention to and trying to line up that bracket to. Now, obviously, it, the, the conduit is probably another variable that you could choose. This is three quarter inch, but you probably could use half inch. I had a bunch of half inch, not quite to the length I could have tested it. Um, but I'd imagine as long as you have a big enough washer at the top that that, that would probably be fine. But it was um, specifically called out in the description of the item that it was designed for three quarter inch conduit. So that's what I'm using. Um, but I, I don't know that that's super specific or important. Um, you could probably try a few different things. You could probably even use a wooden dowel uh, for all I know. That, that seems like that'd be um, valid, although not necessarily as durable in the long run as the rest of the, the whole assembly is going to be. So might as well use EMT. It's moderately inexpensive. It's lightweight and it's strong. So why not? So just getting that cinched down, I'm going to go grab a uh, socket in a, in a moment and get it a little bit tighter because this, though a lot of it I ended up doing um, hand tightening, but this part seemed particularly important to be as um, moderately tight. So I'm trying to show you here, but this was an 11 millimeter socket that I used. You can kind of barely make it out, but if that's uh, something you're trying to keep track of and be prepared and not have to go get three different sockets. I think I got lucky and it was the first one I tried. So it's 11 millimeter socket worked just fine for me. So tighten to your preference and you'll be set. All right, so um, I left an extra foot at the base because I don't know how I'm going to mount it, but I had this old umbrella stand, um, you know, patio umbrella stand that is actually kind of wobbly on the bottom. So it, you're going to see that very obviously later in the video. But I had it as a good, easy, temporary stand for putting this together. Not probably what I'll use long term. It's all, if nothing else, I'm going to need to sand it and make it less wobbly. And it's going to require a bunch of work before I want to commit to using this long run. But Figured it'd be good enough for it now. So I put the pole in there. You can see the bracket that we just attached sticking out. And it's ready for me to put the, kind of hang the tree over it. So here, oh, bump. And we're getting it uh, draped over the top, getting the pin part from that five inch bolt in the top. And now I'm just gonna gently, carefully pull and stretch out the rest of the tree. It's pretty stiff, like in in all the best possible ways um, that you would hope that this would be with it being heavy duty metal and just kind of checking out, making sure that it's going to attach fairly easily, stretch it out a little bit more, make sure it's all going to line up relatively well. Stretching a little bit more, just kind of getting a feel for it. And there is that awesome lean from that umbrella. So that's why we obviously got rid of this uh, umbrella and this stand. It was old, it was a hand-me-down. All right, so now there were two more bolts and nuts that came with the kit. That's what I'm using here to attach the ring tree part to that bracket that we had just attached. And so that's super easy. Again, I did this hand tighten. You could certainly go and uh, go get a ratchet and tighten it down more and probably will before I actually put it out for the season. But this is more about testing it out, figuring out, you know, what the assembly process was really like. All right. So there we have at least the main part of the tree all put together and look pretty good so far. Gonna make a few adjustments, seemed a little heavy uh, on the bottom there. Raise it up. And I think this is kind of a cool thing. You could probably put a three foot pole in the middle there and you'd just get a slightly different look to it. And if you put a six foot pole in there, it'd probably 
have a yet a different kind of look to it so i would uh, there's probably some variants that you could kind of go bigger and smaller with the pole and get a different look to the tree it's just going to naturally have a slightly different shape to it so you could use the same kit for a, a variety of different looks here you can look at the top there's that bolt and washers um sitting into the top of that pole nothing else is really attaching it to the pole and the at the top it's gravity Here's a look at the base. You can see the two bolts there holding it into the bottom there. And for the record, I ended up um, having the start of the string being at the bottom. I could see arguments for being have it being at the top, whatever your preference is. I don't think it's really going to matter, but the L my pixels start at the bottom there. Here we have uh, the start of the top star. This was an optional. This was an additional $10. You got this. Um, part of the kit. So there's 20 pixels, a 20 pixel star, Coro star, and this bracket that's going to allow it to attach to the top of the green tree that we already assembled and put together. And then I have the pixel layout on the on that piece of paper, kind of hard to see, just because I felt like better be safe than sorry, don't want to put it together wrong, uh, and then have to do a custom model or go flip it. The Keeping it as standard as possible always seems like a good idea when you can. So here I'm just going to do a speed through, kind of uh, poking those 20 pixels through. Uh, this is a very simple star, so it's you know pretty much start in the bottom and bottom middle, and work your way around the edge. There isn't any middle parts to it, so there isn't any tricky one, three, two, five type of uh, situation that you have to worry about. This also appeared to be the newer style of Koro that has the extra fill and should be extra sturdy and last a really long time, just like the rest of this whole kit, which seems largely indestructible and uh, intended to be a, a long, long time pro prop to have in your setup. All right, so now I'm looking at the bracket that uh, you attach to the star, which then attaches to the tree. Now, if you'll notice, um, I'm gonna take this and do it the wrong way the first time. So learn from my lesson for some reason I wasn't thinking, sticking the bolt through from the back and realizing about now when I'm with the spacer, that I put the spacer on, I start to put this on and realize, wait, why would the bracket be in the front? And that is the wrong way to do it. Taking the spacer back off, putting the pushing the bolt through. So here's a pro tip, put it on the right side. And there we go, putting it in the back. And I, there are two holes there. I think it depends on how high you want the star up off of the tree. I choose chose the hole that's at the top of the star in the middle there. Um, and using that, uh, I felt like that spacing worked well. So just putting the bolt through, uh, and then it has the spacer on the other side of the star. And then from that, it then uh, connects to that other bracket piece. And I'm just, uh, you can't see it, but <laughs> because it fell out of frame, unfortunately, and I'm a noob. Uh, with doing all this, but uh, getting that screw or bolt into the bracket, uh, just hand tightening it. There's not a whole lot that you need to thread in there. It's a fairly small amount with, between the spacer and that, but the spacer really helps keep it away from all of your pixels, so you're not getting in the way of the pixels, and it helps um, just bring the whole star a little further forward, so there you can see what that looks like all assembled and the pixel connectors at the end, the bottom there, pigtails. Looks good. All right, so now that we have this thing, we, we need to mount it to the tree. And so this is me just showing you there's a hole there behind the larger hole that it uh, rests on at the top. And so just taking, there's a, a nut on the bottom of that bracket that we just attached to the star and you just pop it through there and there's actually a lock wa a lock washer and a nut that you then uh, apply from the bottom and it attaches to the top and you can see how oh, it's pretty close to the tree but that, i like that look but if for some reason you wanted it to be higher up it seems like you could attach it to the lower hole on the star and have a little bit more space uh as, as could imagine very easily that that would be maybe a desirable look um, or an option you could probably drill a hole in the middle too and you know be somewhere in between in the middle um, but yeah so just uh, now I'm gonna attach the pixels be from the star to the end of the tree pixels 
there is that hole there's like a square hole at the top there and uh, you can pass through the pigtails there and there we go there's the assembled tree in its most uh, basic unlit way with uh, some nice lens flare from the sun all natural that's not added in post that's just uh, luck of the draw and the curse of using a phone for this whole thing so there's a square at the top or rectangle i guess that you can pass through the pixel uh tail pigtail to connect it there you can see the two connected and you can see the bottom where uh, that star is connected there a little closer view of the tree and we're going to do some tests now. I brought it into the garage, turn off the lights. You can see it's still daytime a little bit in the bottom left where there's a light coming in from the outside. But here, this is using a differential, a uh, Falcon differential doing the test, going through the colors, red, green, blue, and white. And then this is, I believe, the white pulsing on the differential, the test. Uh, and then we will do one of the other ones, three of the four. This is the color changing version of the tests. Cycling through the colors. Kind of giving you an idea of what this might look like in the real world. And this is using a wired watts pixel tester. I just wanted to get a kind of different look where it's kind of got this chasing pattern of colors and what that would look like on the tree. I think it looks great. It looks really good in all of these different test patterns. All right, well, now we have the fully assembled and tested tree. This was my first spiral tree that I've ever had. I've always kind of liked them and the way they look, but never had one myself. So finally have one. So excited about this. I think it's going to last forever. It just seems the way that Mattis Designs builds things. This is not endorsed or sponsored in any way, but I am definitely very excited about this and I hope to get some more as soon as they release some more, which it sounds like might not be until next year. They did this pre kind of buy to see uh, and, and get feedback from people about what the people like and what should be different and stuff like that. So I would imagine there might be some revisions on this before you're able to buy some more, but check out Mattis Designs uh, and see um, and maybe let them know that you're interested so that they can have a feel for how many people want these when they decide to release some more and uh yeah hopefully you like this uh feel free to like and subscribe as always because this is youtube and you can check out sjlights.com where um, i post stuff about my show and uh, have a huge list of links and everything at sjlights.com slash links with links to vendors of any shape and kind around pixels it's kind of my huge conglomeration of links for all things pixels so check out sjlights.com links for that all right thank you and i hope you enjoyed this